There is a lot of economic impact derived from this water. Comparing to what we used to be 10 years, 15 years back, Kaboko has advanced very, very greatly. We have uh, sanitation, we have uh, advancement, economy, and what have you, because of the water. Because if one goes to Shamba, there's no problem of going to fetch water. You forget about water because water is at home. So you concentrate on other generating activities. Kabuku Water Project was developed between 1969 and 1977 and was supported by the Ministry of Water Development and the local authority. It operated until 1989 when it collapsed due to a combination of poor design and construction, poor operation and maintenance, poor management and lack of accountability. The community reverted to rivers for their day-to-day -day water needs. An initiative by the community to rehabilitate the project started again in 1991 to 1992 in partnership with Swedish development agency SIDA and a local private company business and economic research. Wamboi Geshuri, who at the time worked for this company, comments. When we started working with Kabuko, uh, that was way back in 1991, they had already started collecting uh, money again to see, um, to try and reactivate the water supply. So we came in to join an initiative which had already been started and it's not, it wasn't externally driven. We hired uh, an engineering company to do the design and construction and supervision. And we ourselves designed the uh, management systems for finance, the technical operations and maintenance of the water supply and provided the training to uh, members, ordinary members, to the committees and to the staff. Kabuku Water Project is firmly rooted on user demand. Designed initially for drinking water, it has over the years turned into a water supply that provides members with water for income generating activities. Earlier on, payment was two, we started with 300 shillings coming up, coming up. 1500 as the cost of living went by uh, and this payment was not to be made lapsum. We paid by installments and there was at one time uh, people did work and this work was converted into money. So instead of paying so much, you pay so little, then the rest goes to the work that you've done to other projects, say digging the trench for the pipe uh, and so forth. Usage depends on the weather. Dry weather, so much water. Uh, wet weather, so much water. But on the average, uh, I would say it's, um, 30 cubic meters, 30, 40 cubic meters. Say, for example, my last bill was 1,568. That's what I paid last. Uh, it may even go up to 4,000 bob. And uh, considering what this water does for me, uh, I would say the charge is, is rather minimal. It's, it's, it's quite okay. Yeah. If you work out uh, monthly income, compare it with the amount of water, uh, the, the, the amount of money that we are paying, uh, it's, it's just nothing. The payment that I make is just nothing. I'm very comfortable because I pay for water and there is so much surplus left as the extra income. So. Uh, I'm comfortable. 
Mr. Mbai's income level will be boosted further by the sale of flowers like this, whose demand is high. The size of their plots have not deterred Kabuku consumers from expanding their income generating activities. For them, the only way is up. Other than income, women have been empowered by this project, especially in provision of time to attend women group meetings. This has uplifted the living standards of their families. Last month of September, I used the 10 cubic meters and I paid the 400 shillings. Now, <coughs> about the cows, I found it easier because I have a small farm and I get feeds from the farm and the water is now near me. I don't go very far to fetch the water. Also the dairy is here, so I found it good to keep cow. By the time we didn't have water, we couldn't have like vegetables and we could not be able to buy. So it improves, the water improves our nutrition because we, do, we have greens, we have big mini tomatoes. After feeding my cows, I give them water because it's just here. It helps me to plan even the, my work of the day. Those without direct connections buy water through water kiosks. Kabuku serves about 300 homesteads and about 70% of the residents are reached 
through individual connections. They know rules have to be respected and members pay their bills on time. By the close of the 14th day of every month, payment receipts must be submitted to the office. Failure to comply leads to disconnection. Payment rate is about 98%. Cow feed is a problem for Kabuko community due to the small size of their plots. They have to go far looking for feed and the availability of water is therefore a great asset. I connected this water in 1977 and in that time we were paying 300 shillings and I didn't pay the whole amount uh, at once. Uh, I was paying this by installment. We are paying for three or four installments. Uh, the water I use uh, daily, I've got a small garden, uh, kitchen garden and I use at least 400 liters of water and on the kitchen side or the homestead for the cows and the sheep and the chickens I have, I use at least 600 liters of water daily. That is almost 1,000 liters of water every day. In every month, the average amount I pay is roughly from 1,500 to 1,800 every month. And I consider uh, the payment to be okay. The advantages uh, we are having Oh, I am having in my homestead today, I can see even my family, they are even cleaner. Uh, before the time we had no water for project, I can see now I am still putting some more animals and some more chicken because of the water we have. Also on the type of the, on the side of kitchen, uh, kitchen garden, I'm having a lot of varieties of chicken, of uh, vegetables and uh, I'm not buying the vegetables for my family. I'm still getting all the types of vegetables I need for my family from the, my small garden. Innovative ideas such as growing vegetables like spinach and even onions from a sack boosts productivity and would come in handy for those living in towns. The latest addition is greenhouse on top of the tank where his son intends to start growing flowers. Within the nearby shopping center, there is a milk collection center, which is an added advantage. Members being the owners and supreme authority for this water project, elect a committee to manage the scheme. We have two types of management committee. There is executive committee, that is the, the chairman, the treasurer and the secretary. But generally speaking, the management committee, which is composed of nine people, four men, five men and four women, are the ones who sit down, a requisition is brought before them. So we come together and we discuss those things and we pass them. Through training of leaders and members of staff, Effective systems for managing their finances and operation and maintenance practices have been put in place. Here, I have a copy of Byros. This was prepared so that people could be able to maintain their project. We usually read meters every 24th of every month. And I have our meter reading book here, whereby all records of the what has been consumed for that particular month is uh, recorded. I have a ledger book here which shows the date the meter was read, how many cubic meters was built, 
and how much the cubic meter had to be paid for. If there were any other charges, I also write down. The private company that I worked for, I think, worked very hard to try and um, uh, demonstrate that if members wanted a continuation of service, the water supply had to be looked at as a business concern which must pay its way and th that there is no alternative and they were not going to get any subsidies in the O&M expenses. So the fact that it's seen as a business concern has helped. Uh, the tariffs are sufficient to cover costs, um, uh, the full O&M cost, and there is a surplus uh, that they've been generating over the years and that's what they have used to, to construct the tank. The both human and livestock population here are increasing. And uh, during the hot season, like now, we were forced to ration water because uh, this tank was insufficient for the uh, for for those who wanted the water. So, having accumulated over a million shillings, uh, I called a general meeting. We discussed with them. We explained the importance of the t of the second tank. Uh, they gave us the mandate, and uh, so we we built it with a. Uh, money from our own resources, it was from our own uh, uh, revenue. So we have been able to to uplift the, the standard of the local community, economically, socially, educationally, health-wise. There is an all-out improvement since uh, uh, between 1969 to date. The manner in which Kabuku Water Project is managed falls within the Kenya government policy objective of empowering communities to be managers of their water facilities. The lessons from Kabuku should therefore be replicated. Well, success of the project is attributed to the unity that we have. committee <laughs> And this success has made Kabuku Water Project a showcase. Visitors stream in from within Kenya as well as from other countries. Kabuku Water Project members are well aware that water is their source of livelihood and development. They cannot imagine a Kabuku without water. I don't know what I can say about Kabuko without water, otherwise I can't imagine uh, without having water. I really don't know how it could be because like now you see it's time of drought and the place we are going to fetch water, it comes dry when it's very hot, so it could be a very hard time. Kabuko without water is unimaginable. Uh, considering where we are at the moment. I cannot imagine Kabuko without water. And all there is is uh, we, we should all have an obligation to safeguard these water interests.